you are, you, you are the only one. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited to have you here. Uh, my, me personally, I'm excited because first of all, uh, when I was looking at your bio note, I, I thought that it was incorrect and ma'am has given me the uh, link to a professor who is teaching uh, biology or who is teaching zoology or something like that. I had no idea that you have been able to combine uh, preservation and of culture, indigenous culture and preservation of uh, indigenous flora and fauna. Uh, in your work and it, it, it's 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 it reminded me of excuse me it reminded me of uh, uh, Padmashri Kanvitabhi's work with ornithology with birds in uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and she has already she she did that and she wrote the book she wrote an entire book on how uh, the names of the birds signify so many different things and it was a it was a phenomenal book actually so I'm sure uh, you have done something equally phenomenal in your work as well and I have looked at the the project page and the way you have be, worked towards the um, preservation of periodicals which I think are extremely important specifically coming from a house my father has periodicals of this magazine called Desh, which is a Bengali magazine, and he has this over like fifty years. Uh, he has ha he has preserved these periodicals. So I understand the importance of periodicals that are that's there in any culture. In fact, so uh, congratulations on your work, and we are extremely excited to listen to you today. Uh, I would like to welcome you and whoever is here. Uh, if you have not seen if you have not looked at ma'am's uh, work it's extremely phenomenal she is currently an assistant professor at the school of oceanographic studies jadapur university uh, she's interested in understanding the effective use of scientific information for conserving culture habitat biodiversity in the face of growing threats of extinction and specifically uh, the sustain the, the the preservation of indigenous culture and the indigenous um, uh, knowledge is so important uh, alongside her scientific work she engages with santhal culture and actively participates in the documentation and preservation of the endangered cultural heritage. Her work includes mapping traditional Santali songs, as well as locating and digitizing early Santali periodicals through digital humanities and archiving at the School of Cultural Texts and Records, Dadapur University. This is extremely um, uh, knowledgeable and extremely a new field actually I had no idea that something like this could even be possible like somebody who is working who is an assistant professor of oceanographic studies is working with linguistics so we are very excited to have you here with us today ma'am uh, and over to you you can please uh, please go ahead and give let us know what your work has been what kind of uh, what kind of troubles have you faced while doing this and uh, what what's your insight uh, while working in this particular area because of course your core area is completely different and oceanography and then you are working towards the pre preservation of uh, a cultural heritage so welcome and over to you ma'am thank you so much uh, that's that's a lot to live up to and uh, thank you for the generous introduction uh, yeah, I think we all come together um, to realize uh, what we are passionate about and work things out, how to go about it, about how to, you know, address that. So um, it has been a very uh, humbling experience. And uh, as Madhuri has also said, it, there are people all over who have been trying to preserve this, especially people coming from minority speaking languages, uh, languages which are lesser spoken um, and are always in a threat of uh, you know being engulfed within other languages so uh, that itself has been a struggle uh, for many communities and uh, being able to carve away in an academic institution i think that has been a uh, inspiration in itself uh, looking at elderly people who have hold on uh, with very little means uh, and I think this is a way where I try to I think take this a little bit further uh, in terms of holding on to this very important and dear um, you know cultural documents if I may say so. So um, without any further delay I will just uh, delve into uh, my work and then perhaps we can discuss a bit more about uh, your experiences as working in different fields in different geographical locations as well as coming from different cultural backgrounds and uh, definitely unique challenges uh, as it were. So uh, I'll just take a minute to uh, share my slide here. Hmm. 
you can see it right yeah <laughs> it is but uh, can you make it this make this into a, a slide show yeah sure um let me see if if the slide show is yeah. visible this is done right? oh, yeah yeah perfect perfect yeah yeah so um as many of you know i have been working with uh, santali periodicals and uh, this is uh, this is kind of an effort uh, towards whom uh, because i come from the santali community and uh, i have seen people how they have uh, struggled uh, long 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 before uh, i was born even so um, this i'll start by acknowledging the ancestors that have taken this uh, huge uh, effort in trying to uh, do whatever possible for them at a given time. And only that is why uh, we are able to uh, do whatever is possible, the material that has been uh, kept uh, by people who are like in their 80s, 90s now. And uh, yeah. So starting off with that, uh, I'll say, um, I, I'm sure many of us know, but uh, still I'm going to insist on uh, giving a little background. As uh, Santali people, we call ourselves Horde, Horde Hopon, and uh, like children of men. And it is the, the word Santal even, uh, we call ourselves Santali and it's not Santal. And it's was a given name by someone who is uh, or people who are not uh, Santal themselves. So uh, though since it's, it is widely known as Santal, I will stick to the term, but I'll give you examples as well where uh, we ourselves call ourselves Hord and uh, Hord Hopon. So uh, the um, Cultural material, if you see, it has mostly been an um, oral culture. And it's only just around 100 years that it has been started to be documented uh, in the form of text documents, uh, in forms of books and periodicals. And this was uh, initiated by the missionaries that had, they have who have visited uh, in the Santal Pargana area, in Benikaria, in places in West Bengal, Jharkhand, Orissa, as well as in Assam, in, and had set uh, their uh, mission to form different pockets of missionaries and they are the ones who will who had initiated uh, writing in Santari. So we'll also uh, discuss this a little bit later but uh, it's very interesting to see that the largest uh, archival document collection of Santal uh, documents is, is present in Oslo. As you can see in this uh, slide, the Santal collection, the Santal people in the largest tribal population in South Asia. And uh, the there's a plethora of documents around around 30,000 uh, pages and images which are preserved in Norway. Because uh, the people, the missionaries who had come had taken those back along with them. Uh, some of it had been published before independence uh, and um, some of them are available, but it has been a tug of war uh, since uh, a long, long time uh, that people from the community themselves are not able to um, access these materials which are a uh, hundred years old. So it's uh, very recently with an effort of uh, digital humanities and archiving, uh, they have been able to put up uh, quite a number of uh, documents, almost 90%. But uh, there are other documents as well, which are which were written, which we find mentions in different references, uh, written by the indigenous community of that time, are not yet put online. So um, as we go further, we will also talk about access and accessibility of uh, these rare documents. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that this has been uh, put up by the Oslo 
archives. And uh, looking at this itself, uh, it's been a huge inspiration for me as uh, we, the people of the community, should take an initiative in uh, documenting what is there with us. So uh, it's, it's it has always been a struggle to publish anything uh, because there's not mm, many people who can afford uh, literacy in the first place and who will be there to buy their published documents. So even now, uh, the, the practice, the usual practice is to self-publish the books because there, there are very, very few publishers who take upon uh, this task of publishing documents. So uh, one of the very important documents <clears throat> that I found in the Oslo University Li Library Archive is a copy of the agreement on how Santali shall be written. So this document was dated in 1905, as you can see here. It's a longer document. It's around 12 uh, pages of a document. Uh, and this is the first page. And it's written in terms of minutes. So uh, you will eventually also see that uh, Santali, as we know, is uh, written in five scripts. And as the missionary had started it, uh, they had started writing uh, Santali in, uh, in the Roman script, as you can also see here. And the first missionaries who had worked among the Santas were Scrape Root, Bodine, uh, Kole, and the other ones who had uh, taken upon themselves in deciding and deciphering uh, how it, is it Santari should be written. So uh, there are many, many other documents as well in these archives uh, from which uh, the early manuscript uh, from which Bodine, P.O. Bodine, who had uh, published a voluminous uh, dictionary, the only one uh, that is present of that kind uh, of five volumes of Santali and English. <clears throat> so uh, you can go to their website. Uh, that's, yeah, if you uh, type basically Santali Manuscript and Cultural Heritage Oslo, uh, you will find the documents over there. I have forgotten to share the link here, but it's easily, you can find it. So uh, coming to the project that uh, we had embarked upon, uh, it's named Locating and Digitizing Early Santali Periodicals published between 1890 and 1975 in Eastern India. So uh, this is a project which was funded by the Intrinsic Archives Program of the British Library. And I have been very lucky to be a part of Jadavpur University and uh, the School of Cultural Texts and Records have been able to uh, digitize many, many rare documents, texts, audio files um, since, uh, you know, 2003. So we recently celebrated 20 years of this initiative. And as you can imagine, in 2003, there were uh, hardly any other organizations uh, who had initiated such an effort. So uh, being part of this uh, culture of digitizing and archiving had also given me this opportunity to uh, take up this project in the first place. Uh, so if you go to this link uh, that I have shared here at the bottom, then you will uh, go and look at all the materials that has been digitized. In total, around uh, 5,500 images have been shared of uh, these documents. Uh, the team that consisted of uh, this EAP 1300, where Shuto Kirti, Dotto, and Omitish without them, definitely, I mean, it would have been very difficult. So they have been very helpful in every way. And uh, for any archiving to uh, be meaningful and have been doing it successfully. Uh, we need people who are experts in listing, in data management, in archiving, on digitization. Uh, as in when we usually go to the field, we go to places, outward places where we don't have electricity as well. So how do we go about digitizing material where we don't have electricity? So it's a very specialized field and uh, one needs 
training in that for quite some time and experience in that. So um, Omritesh have been looking at looking it at uh, very uh, wonderfully and a very fast way. And uh, Shitaram our Shitaram Bashke, uh, he works at the All India Radio uh, station, and he has also been very helpful uh, in locating, especially uh, Santali manuscripts. So we have been. Uh, visiting many places in mostly in Eastern India in Jharkhand, Orissa, where we could find these documents and digitize them. So if you further uh, go into the web page, you will find uh, this is categorized according to the collection, <clears throat> the collection of W. Shorin, uh, Rabun Chandra Baske, Shushil Baske, and uh, Mohadev Hasta and Purno Chandra Shorin. These are also categorized and um, complete metadata has been created of these documents. And even if you are unable to understand the language, you will have a transcription of what does this uh, material contain. So these materials uh, mostly contain uh, different cultural materials across the time of centuries. And uh, I will show you a few examples uh, from the material that we have been able to collect and digitize. So uh, one of the very rare volumes uh, that we found was Dharva. So it was published in uh, 1931 to 1936. And many of these are have impaginations, they have colored, uh, they have been they displaced many a times because uh, as you might know, they have undergone uh, displacement in terms of nationalite movements. They have undergone displacement because of people couldn't hold on to them for a longer period of time. And uh, there's this another example, uh, Shushar Dahar, which we have digitized four volumes of. And as you can see that uh, you can already see one is written in the Bangla script and one in the Roman script here. Uh, you will come <laughs> come and see other uh, scripts as well pertaining to this. So uh, we have also digitized uh, materials which uh, is are very unique and uh, other documents as such are, are not found from that time from the culture from especially the Santali cultural heritage. So this is a book called Hor Gidra Ene. So Hor Gidra Ene is a book where children's games were documented. So this was published in 1946. And even if you see the history of uh, game books, uh, you will find that in 1946, there were uh, hardly any books in India, especially where, where people worked and talked about games. So some of these games I, I found very interesting because as a kid I myself, I have had uh, played these games when I used to visit the village and uh, I could relate to. But there were also some games which are no longer played, which I had no access to. And uh, I think perhaps uh, someone should take this up and revive some of these, these games because in the formative years, of course, these are very important in uh, mental development, in development of skills, in development of uh, eye and uh, the motor uh, nerves and such and such. So some of them are uh, called as Duruk Tingun, Pushi Pushi, Oko Oko. Oko Oko is like hide and seek. And uh, Merong Tapu, it's uh, about uh, very intricate games. The picture that you can see here, uh, it's uh, of Bath Chak, where it's known in other names as well. Uh, it's how, uh, uh, you know, a tiger and a uh, goat is eaten so it's a strategy game and it has different uh, ways of playing it the same game you can play it in different uh, ways and different strategies with different uh, diagrams so the best part of this book is is, is it's an illustrated book where people have um, put down upon the rules of the game how to go about it and uh, yeah i hope that someday we will be able to uh, you know extend this Play. We'll also <clears throat> had books, uh, Chandni and uh, Jota Jabai. These are 
plays written uh, by another missionary who had started up a school for girls and another school for boys. And uh, he used to write play for, uh, for every year for the uh, children to enact. And uh, there are 30 plays uh, written for the girls and 31 plays written for the boys. And I think this is the only copy, only surviving copy that is uh, present. And now uh, I think many, it's, it's, it has a much wider uh, accessibility as it were. So uh, yeah, so I'll read some of the um, materials from which I have taken this. Uh, this is from Dharva, uh, which was published in April 1934. I'll read the one from the book, and I had translated this for um, the larger audience. So this says, Nui Gede Chen Emeneta. Noa Chandore, Poro Il Shamta Okete, Joto Shantar Hopon Kodo, Pera Horako Chala. আর গেডে হপন কত চিরা বা চালা গেয়া কো আলে গেডে ওকা ধারে দা মেনা ওনে গে পেরা হরলে চালা মেন খান হর হর হপন কদ ইউ কেন আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড হর হপন ইজ এগেন ইউ নো হর এজ বি ডিপেক্টিং আসোকাইতে সহরায় যখন ওকালে ঢের হাঁডি মেনা ওনে গে কো মানরা আর মোড়ে তুরুই দিন হাঁডি রেগে কো পায়রা আদমক মেনা বাংমা হর হপন কদ আক আক পরব করে আলে গেড়ে লেখা ক নুয়া গেড়ে আকিল তেক বহেল আলে গেড়ে লাগি মিটেন মারা লাজাও রেনাক আলে দো এনতে সঝে গে পেড়া হরলে চালা না পায় তে গেলে তাহে না আর আডি না পাইতে গে ওকাতে রুয়ড় হিজুয়া মেনখান হর হপন কদ মুদ্রে আইমা কদ সানাম কদ বাং মানুয়া লেখা পেড়া হড় কো চালা বাজার রেন ছেতা লেখা তাহেনা কো আর সুখ্রি লেখা কো আহ তে কো রুয়ড় হিজুয়া সারি গে আলে দো হাঁস হাসি তুলুই সাগিন মাচা পেড়া কানালে মেনখান সেতা সুখ্রি আর গুল হর কো আলে তুলুই চেদ হবা কানা কো কথা তো ইনগে সো ধরব হ্যাজ বিন মিশনারি পাবলিকেশন অ্যান্ড ইট হ্যাজ মেনি পাবলিকেশন উইচ আই মিন মেনি ডকুমেন্টস টেক্স উইচ টক অবাউট রিডলস উইচ টক অবাউট দ্য কালচারাল ইউ নো প্র্যাকটিস অফ দ্যাট টাইমস পোয়েমস songs but along with that uh, the the mission mission for the missionaries were also to convert and convince the indigenous people uh, to embrace christianity so this is one such story uh, i see this as uh, you know the in the if you know the uh, creation myth of the santal so um, it we come from the geese and here uh, the moral of the story here is don't be like the geese uh, because the geese is almost ashamed of uh, being related through the santal because uh, men drink and uh, do not behave themselves so uh, it's a subtle way but uh, we also get to understand what has been the influence of uh, christianity and uh, how it had uh, you know uh, we have we get other instances of um, of how it was propagated at that time so uh, i'll not read the english part here but uh, i'll go on to the next one uh, yeah so this is a picture game where uh, we we also see other pictures as well uh, similar pictures in other publications where uh, there the kabli or the kabli people from uh, afghanistan or kabli wala as we know though the kabli has two faces so kabli baria muthan mena takwa pahil muthon ke to nyelo a tisse adi dular te kichri ema pekana ko ar dosar muthan te তিসে পাশে কাউতে কাউডি লাগি 
লাঠি ঠেঙ্গা হিজা আর টাকা দেন ছাড়া পারম বাক মেনা দশার মুঠনতে বতর গে কল নুই নাকশারেন রসকা মুঠন ছাড়া তে এদরে মুঠন হো মেনাক মাসে নেলে তাপে মাসে নাম তাপে তে আড আলগা গে সো ইটস এ ওয়ে অফ in a joking way of course but you can understand that uh, how the kabli wala or the people from kabul have been uh, depicted as uh, very cunning uh, to the people of the santal parganas of that time banagaria of that time and how um, uh, what has been the picture of the kabli wala so uh, and such information such as the kabriwala were present in those vicinities is something also that we get to know so uh, you you find the picture and you understand uh, how it is how it operates so to say so uh, i'll not go into the details of this of course so that we have some time uh, to discuss uh, as well so uh, this is another uh, Sharen, Sharen is a song, uh, is Rar Chatiya. So Chatiya Sharen is uh, the song where uh, people, uh, when, when a child is born, so they are the ones who are uh, you know, welcomed into the community. And this is Neem Dakmari Sharen or the Neem Rice Gruel, which is... Uh, Uh, you can see the oriole sings from mango tree relatives will come visit today cries the oriole from the mango tree relatives new relatives are just arrived about to arrive mm-hmm. so new to re- new relatives it's like very loosely translated but uh, in 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 the community it is uh, understood nawa pera nawa pera is someone uh, who is new which can be a, a born newly born child mm-hmm. but also can be a new you know in laws or uh, para who is arriving so there's a lot of um, cultural connotations uh, hidden inside these songs and without uh, you know sort of decontextualizing would not uh, give you access to the understanding of the community meaning inside these uh, texts so uh, apart from these of course we have also biographies of campbell who also uh, worked among the communities you can also uh, see chotrai deshmaji katha so this is very interesting because chotrai deshmaji uh, uh, this was a historical figure a person who had uh, witnessed the santal pool of 1855 when he was around 14 years old uh he was not a literate person but after the hul he was displaced and he went to assam he was forced to go to assam and when he was around 85 years old so there were very less number of people who had actually witnessed the santal pool of 1855 so now there are a lot of initiatives of trying to understand what had happened how uh, it had uh how there was an uprising and how it was crushed by the Brit- british rule of that time so chotrai deshmaji had uh, actually narrated his uh witnessing of hul and raya shorin had uh, written it down it is also quite contested contested as well as uh, uh you know many people uh, find it to be very offensive as well because many heroes such as the um, shidu or the kanu who were uh, active part of uh, the santal pool where you are reading this you will also understand what else had also happened uh, during that time so we also get to know or understand different perspective of a uh, a uh, uh, rebellion and uh, looking at how and what had happened at that time so hor shambhas as you can see is written in devanagari again so uh, this was published by the government uh, of that time uh, bihar government and uh, it it was a way of reaching out to people as well as letting people know of the community what is happening uh, 
And uh, one can also argue that uh, this can jolly well be very biased, but uh, we get a picture of, and it get, gives a platform to uh, many indigenous people who had started to uh, read and write at that time. Uh, yeah, so I will share this poem that was written by a Sharada Purusha in 1960. And uh, this is, uh, mind you, the only example uh, I uh, give written by an indigenous person of that time. And uh, the earlier ones were mostly uh, written by non-Santals, about the Santals, and their uh, politics would also be very interesting to see and study. So uh, this poem that was published uh, in Harshambad is uh, titled En Ho. En Ho is, uh, oh, I have the translation in the next page. Yeah. So, Amlekan In Ho Manmikani, In Ho Hormo Jini Minakir, In Ho Napaekan Tahin Chamer, Nawa Hor Kondo, Okoi, Okoi Sahain. In ho hinatina renge rapa. In ho hinatina mone on tor. In ho hormo jivi minatina. In ho napayakan tahin sana. So Sharada Prashat Kishku has uh, been known as a poet uh, who had instilled uh, a lot of faith and a lot of uprising among the people and also has been an important part in the. Uh, building of the Jharkhan movement and ultimately where uh, in 2013 onwards uh, it was uh, the, the the language itself was uh, documented in the age schedule of our country and after that there has been uh, a lot of other uh, influences as well as uh, initiatives uh, to read and write in the language but well that again uh, is disputed and I'll not go into that but uh, we have other other documents as well uh, which speak about uh, the different cultural aspects of the community mm -hmm. and something some practices which are uh, no longer practiced even see riddles or proverbs which were so much used in say the earlier generation uh, are no longer used uh, in day to day life uh, so these were uh, my collaborators. Uh, this Tilka, Baba Tilka Library is uh, in Orissa. And uh, the collaborators on my left are Mohadev Hasta. Uh, we have digitized quite a few of his collections. And uh, without their struggle and without their uh, input, uh, this project wouldn't have been taking place in the first place uh, at all. So uh, this is an ongoing project, I would like to say, and uh, there's so much more to be done. And I hope many other people will also take this up. So without whom, uh, which I will not be able to uh, finish this talk, is uh, looking at the School of Cultural Text and Records, Shadoku University. So they have been pioneering in this field and uh, please go to their website, Grand Southeast Asia, Grand South Asia, sorry, and uh, you will find uh, catalogs of different documents uh, that have been digitized uh, by the school. And uh, there are many other projects, ongoing projects as well, uh, where you can uh, delve into it. And you are most welcome if you're ever in Jadavpur in Kolkata, please come down to our archive because because of copyright issues, of course, not everything can be shared online, but you're most welcome to come down to our university. And uh, last, but definitely not the least, this is the team, my inspiration, uh, Professor Shukanta Choudhury, um, and the team at the archive uh, at Jadapur. Uh, yeah, I'll stop here. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I'll be happy to take your Do we have any questions? If you have any, uh, if anybody has any questions or any observations, you are welcome to share. 
uh, by the time you guys are uh, framing those questions uh, let me have a conversation with uh, dr rai suren myself first of all ma'am thank you very much for doing this uh, and it was very exciting to listen to your work because this is the kind of data this is the kind of um, information that we as linguists are looking for every single time we want to do a social linguistic or we want to do a cultural preservation project uh, because it's like a treasure trove the 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 magazines that you have the games that you uh, found i think uh, you talked about the children's games and is it just one book which uh, which which has the collection of all the different kind of games which are played yeah uh, it, there were 78 if i'm not wrong uh, but mm -hmm. it's in one book it's in one book so you yeah. did find one book which had like all of these games uh, and i don't think many of those are, are those games being played by uh, santhali children today most of them are not being played okay. but uh, okay. there are uh, quite a few which are still still being played yes still popular still popular yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, like because i why i'm asking is because the community that the community that i have worked with community that professor astogi has worked with i have so far worked with only one community and we have tried so hard to find uh, a creation story uh, children's games or children's poetry or the small diff small rhymes uh, which we have which people have uh, uh, usually uh, in their cultures and we have not been able to find so it's so disappointing and at the same time i look at your work and it, you have been so blessed and if that's the only uh, like word which is coming to my mind that you have been so blessed to find all of this treasure trove and all of these old books and old magazines and periodicals so it's wonderful like i would definitely like to come down every any time i'm in jadavpur and have a look at look at what you what you have uh, collected uh, there's one thing which i wanted to ask you like because uh you work with the community members right how yeah. how how uh, you and you yourself are a member of the community yes i am right so that gives you a certain kind of a legitimacy that you have the right to work with the community you have automatically have the right to preserve like to work towards the preservation and uh, yeah. what do you what do you feel about uh for example uh, you i think you started your talk about talk with how santhali is a name which has been given not it's not the name which the community itself has for it has for itself it's a name which has been given by outsiders um i would like this is a personal question how do you feel about using that name uh not academically uh, like academically i understand it has to be used because it is a, an observed and it is an accepted terminology but um uh, going beyond the boundaries of academics how do you feel using it and secondly uh, how do you feel about um, members who are not uh, members of your community uh, claiming some of the work uh, which probably is being done in this particular field well first of all i would like to say uh, any archiving document uh, is built upon trust so uh, without trust is very difficult to uh, mobilize or even do anything at all uh honestly uh, i have reached out to many many people uh, who have been uh, you know collecting and preserving documents but uh, not only in this and not only in my experience but uh, experience of seniors who have also been working in different with other communities other collectors uh it's something that not everyone is comfortable in sharing what they have with the world and uh, for me personally as well i we have reached out to 10 people and at least two have are not comfort are still not comfortable in sharing their uh, treasure so uh, it is uh, we have to respect that and perhaps in time we will be able to gain their trust and be able to uh, uh, reach out to people more that about the importance of uh, preserving it, things digitally so even if when it is digitally preserved i will say that it's not like um, done and dusted because uh, you know like uh, when we first started using computers we ha we had these floppy disks and then we had cds and we no longer have cd drives so we are unable to you know like even if we have a cd we cannot access that right so uh, i don't know if in another 20 30 years time what format we, we will have and if we will be able to access it or not so this has to be an ongoing thing uh, that needs to be addressed uh, through technology as well um for the other part uh, that you were asking um, yeah so 
you know, I think there's a lot of unlearning that needs to be done and we are doing it every single day. And uh, as in, uh, honestly, my name as it is R-A-H-I, most uh, of the people pronounce it as Dahi and uh, so did I. Uh, but, you know, it's actually in Santari, it's, uh, it's called Rahi. So uh, from a very personal point of view, uh, wow. even I have to learn that uh, in and see perhaps uh, put it into practice. <laughs> yeah so and it's, it's actually it's so uh, mind-blowing right because uh, your name is a part of your identity and to have uh, you know that challenge that it's not, not really Rahi but it's Rahi and this whole the process which which you had to go through I I'm blowing I think we have something uh, in the chat box um, Monali asks Monali would you like to speak it out or should I read out your I'll just read out your question uh, Monali asks uh, how has how has been the Santali archiving team working on digital copyrights of the manuscripts. Are they open access or restricted for full access to the manuscripts? Well, um, we have uh, digitized and uploaded materials uh, through the British Library uh, portal. Uh, only the documents which are which do not have copyright issues. So all these documents that I have been showing you are freely available and we have copyright issues. Uh, I mean, we don't have copyright issues, but uh, we have the um, proper copyrights to be able to digitize and uh, put it uh, out. So documents who are which uh, are not copyrighted are usually not shared or even if it is shared, it is, uh, in, in the larger perspective, I say, see, though, even if those are digitized, those are not shared. So that is the understanding with the uh, holders uh, or the collectors uh, that there is. So in the School of Cultural Texts and Records, we have materials uh, which were given by um, well-wishers, uh, which, which they do not themselves have the copyright, so they can't give it away. Right. So for the preservation purpose, uh, we keep it, but we cannot distribute it. Right. So uh, we have around uh, 6000 hours of uh, Hindustani classical music, uh, but uh, we cannot share it. So, um, yeah, but then again, uh, there are libraries uh, which you can visit. And so are archiving places where you can visit and listen to it, make notes of it, and uh, yeah, so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, do we have any anything else? Um, uh, anything in the chats? OK, I don't think we have any. Thank you so much, Dr. Rahi, for Dr. Rahi, uh, for uh, being I see Kavita Ji. And... I hope you are uh, doing well. It's pretty cold, I guess. It is. It's extremely cold. You will look at me. I'm I'm sitting in front of a heater doing this because inside the house also is very cold. Uh, so thank you very much, Dr. Rahi, for doing this. It was a very, very enlightening um, talk. And I'm sure uh, I am very energized looking at the kind of work that you have uh, done and the archiving and the different, uh, you know, material that you have collected. So it's, it's, uh, it's good that I think it's good that the language has you. Uh, and I'm sure that many linguists who are here, who are listening to you and who will be listening to this talk later on on our, on our uh, YouTube channel will find inspiration in what you have done and work towards uh, preservation and conservation of their own languages or even possibly Santhali uh, in the future. Thank you so much for being uh, here and thank you everybody else who is here. Um, you guys can uh, access this later on in your um, in, in the in the in cells uh, YouTube channel as well. Thank you very much for coming. Kavita ji, you are muted. I must thank uh, Rahi and uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, couldn't join earlier, but uh, I will definitely... Uh, I heard a few uh, last slides you were talking and I, I knew about your work. That's why I wanted to invite you. And um, uh, definitely your work uh, provides a kind of treasure for linguists because uh, uh, we are doing a revitalization for Raji. And, so much, yeah. to, and I was just thinking from that point of view, uh, are there uh, linguists, do you have any idea that uh, linguists are doing some kind of revitalization work uh, 
regarding their games and other activities? Are they uh, I do about uh, reviving of language uh, and uh, trying to build. Uh, well, very recently I um, heard a talk uh, by Ganesh Deviji and he was talking about languages which we do not think are endangered at all. But uh, his take was that uh, we uh, do not know when a language is endangered because without a digital presence, uh, all languages are endangered. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know very young, some young people uh, who I recently met who are working with uh, Santali uh, Wikipedia. And uh, some people who are trying to work uh, with the uh, computer softwares uh, uh, from text to speech or speech to text, uh, that sort of, an, uh, you know, like, I think those work are very, very important for uh, the survival and of, you know, practices uh, as well as the language in itself. So, uh, yeah, but I seriously haven't... Uh, heard of revitalization of uh, games, uh, so to say. <laughs> but it would really be wonderful if uh, we could do it or someone could take it up. Thanks thanks a lot for accepting our invitation and uh, for your presentation. I'm delighted. Thank you. And, yeah. Hope to meet you again. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Thank you Thank so much. You all.